Okay. So today uh, we're going to be talking about downloading books uh, from the CELA site as well as from uh, Bookshare. I'm going to start off talking about the CELA site and I'm going to hand it over to Christina from Bookshare and she's going to talk a little bit about that. So before we get started, uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Phil Springall. I'm an information specialist and I work with the CNIB library. I've worked with the library for around uh, nine years now. Um, and a big portion of my job is helping clients uh, use our website with adaptive technology or um, you know, trying to download books. Uh, CNIB library website is virtually identical to the CELA site, so those skills are hopefully transferable. So I should be able to help you out today. Uh, we are going to have Q&A after both presentations. And for today it's going to be just text chat only. Uh, this is our first time doing a WebEx webinar, so fingers crossed everything goes uh, well. Uh, but I did want to mention that we are recording it, so if you run into any technical issues, um, you know, we'll make the recording available to you afterwards. So just getting started here uh, for my agenda portion. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the kind of technologies that are available for when you're trying to download a book. And then I'm going to talk about two popular download methods uh, for DAISY books. We're going to look at tablets and we're going to look at um, desktop uh, computers. Sorry about that beeping noise. That's people joining the conference. I'm not sure how to turn that off at the moment, but uh, we'll, we'll soldier on through it here. So the first thing I want to mention are all of the options that, that are out there when you're trying to download a book. Obviously, uh, not everyone is using the same computer and the same setup. People will be using different operating systems like Windows or iOS. They'll use different browsers, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari. And they might be using different adaptive technology, uh, things like JAWS, Zoom Text, or VoiceOver. So you get a lot of different comb combinations here in terms of the kinds of ways that people might be downloading books. And it gets a little bit more complicated when you factor in different devices, like the Victor Stream or the iPad. Um, if you're trying to download a book uh, with Internet Explorer or Firefox, um, there will be a difference in the download method. It might be slight, but there is a difference there. In fact, there's a difference even within Internet Explorer. If you're using Internet Explorer 11 versus Internet Explorer 8, there's a difference. So I just highlight this to let you know that there's all these different kind of combinations out there, and it can make it really challenging uh, for testing, for my purposes, and in testing out the site, but also in training. Uh, for creating training materials uh, for staff. So what I want to do today is just cover um, two of the popular download methods um, for our DAISY audiobooks. The first one is uh, we'll be using a tablet, an iPad, which you're probably familiar with, and the read to go app. The second will be uh, using a desktop, Windows 7 and Internet Explorer 11, which is a fairly common setup for our clients. Okay. So if you're using an, an iPad, the first thing that you will want to do is download the Read to Go app. Uh, the Read to Go app is uh, developed by Bookshare actually, and they'll, they'll be talking a little bit more about it later. Uh, but the neat part about this app is not only can you play back uh, Bookshare books, but you can also play back CELA books on it. So it's, it's really useful um, for uh, your clients. So the first thing you want to do is download that app. Make sure you have that on your iPad. And then the next screen here, this is a, a screenshot of uh, the iPad. And this is just Safari. This is the default browser that you'll, you'll get with your iPad. And here I am on the CELA website. And I've done a, a search. This is Anne of Green Gables. And what, I, what we're looking for in particular is a, is a format called Daisy Download Zip. And in order to kick off this process of checking out the book and downloading the book, you need to select, or since this is an iPad, you'll be tapping this link, Get It, Daisy, Download, Zip. So we're going to tap that link. And then it brings us up uh, to this next page here. Now, what this page tells us is that um, the book has been checked out to us. 
but that's all that's happened at this point. And I know some clients uh, will sit here waiting thinking, well, maybe the book has started to download, but it hasn't. The only thing that's happening here is the book's been checked out to you. If you want to start the download process, it's simple. You just have to tap this link here, the download link. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, nothing happened. And that, that's a quote from clients sometimes we hear. I, I, I tapped on this download link and nothing happened. Uh, in actual fact, something has happened. Um, one of the things about the iPad is it's not that great in terms of letting you know that it's working. Whether it's trying to load up a new page, or whether in this case it's to download something, it's not always that evident. There actually is a visual indication on the screen. It's that teeny tiny little pinwheel at the top of the screen. That will rotate around and it will let you know um, that a book is being downloaded. Not ideal for our clients. Um, so what I do when I'm talking to people, the first thing I do is I have to preach a little bit of patience. Uh, you have to wait depending on the size of the book. Um, if there are concerns as sort of a proof of concept that this is working, uh, I'll suggest trying a kid's book, um, a really short book that will download quickly. Um, you'll be able to tell that the download was successful because the screen will change and it will look like this. So right in the middle of the screen you have the zip file. There's the, uh, the file name for it, the file size, and you have options. In this case, uh, I have one option which is open and read to go. Uh, depending on the apps that you have on your iPad, uh, you might have more options there. But what I'm going to do here is go ahead and tap on that. And what that will do is open up uh, the read to go app. And here I am on the bookshelf of that app. And there you can see uh, Anne of Green Gables. So that is sort of the easiest way um, to download books from our site. Let's look at something a little bit more complicated. Desktop. So what I'm using here is Windows 7 and Internet Explorer 11. And here I am on that same page where I've selected the Get It link. And I'm at this option here where I can download the book. And I've actually already selected the download link. So what's happened here is we have this lovely sort of gold bar at the bottom of the screen asking us if we want to open or save. The thing to reiterate at this point is you will not get this gold bar uh, if you're using Firefox or Chrome. Uh, the, the situation for downloading will be a little different for each of them. In theory, it will all be the same. It will all be sort of an option to either open or save uh, the file. And in actual fact, if you were using Internet Explorer 8, which is you know, the, the same browser, um, this would look a little different as well. Some of you might be familiar with that um, gray pop-up window you would usually see in the middle of the screen. So what we want to do at this point is we want to save the book. So generally what we tell clients is it's a good practice to create a folder on your computer called Books and you want to save the books into that folder. Um, my experience is that no one does that. Um, they just go ahead and click on Save. And that's, that's totally fine. Um, typically what will happen when you save uh, a book is it will go into your Downloads folder on your computer. Pretty much everyone will have one of those folders, usually called Downloads. It might be called My Downloads. Um, so this is my one here. So I'm going to go into this folder. And there we go. So I've already downloaded this book before. So here we have uh, my downloads folder. And there's the book right there, Anne of Green Gables. And it's a zip file. You can see at the end, .zip. I have this nice little logo here, zip, and a little box. And then even over here on the type, I have zip archive. So the reason that we zip these books is uh, just to make the download easier, to download all the files in, in, in one package. But there's something that you have to do if you want to work with these files. Um, what you're going to need to do is unzip um, this zip file. 
you call it unzipping or you can call it extracting. And I know for some of our clients that might, this might be new or a little bit confusing, um, but really all you're doing is you're taking all the files that are in this zip folder and you're putting them into a regular folder, sort of like this one up here. So I'm just going to start off this process here. And the way I do it, if you just right click on it, you'll get some options. And again, I want to mention that these options will be different depending on your setup. In fact, I know later, later on um, Christina is going to be showing you um, some Bookshare files and I can peek at some of her screenshots and they looked a little different than mine. But what you're looking for um, is to extract the files or unzip them. So I see this IZ arc language everywhere. So if I go over here, there we go. I have a bunch of different options. And what I want to do is just go to extract to. And typically what will happen, um, it will open up a sort of a little wizard to walk you through the extraction process. And I usually leave everything as is. It's going to extract it uh, usually right to the same location, in this case the downloads folder. So let's just try that out. So you can see it's starting to extract the files and you can see it's already created that file folder here in my downloads. So we'll just give this another couple of seconds here to download. Um, and then we'll open up that folder and, and show you uh, what's inside. Okay, almost there. And done. All right. So you can see the difference here. Uh, obviously, uh, the names are almost exactly the same, so that can be a little bit confusing. But your zip file is going to end with .zip and your unzipped one is not. It's also going to look a little different here. The, the little logo in front is different, and it's just a regular file folder. So why do you have to do this? Well, most devices, uh, they're not going to recognize uh, the zip file, uh, so you do need to unzip it. And what can you do with it now? Well, again, we come to another sort of uh, fork in the road. It, it really depends on what devices you have, or even if you just want to play it on the computer. Uh, this is a DAISY book, so it can be played on DAISY compatible devices like the Victor Stream, but it can also be played on um, some regular MP3 players. I just want to show you it, it, what a DAISY book is. So let's just open this up. So these will probably be familiar to you. These are, these are just MP3 files. A DAISY book is made up of MP3 files, and then things that we call smile files. Uh, so these provide some structure to the book. So what we found or what I've found um, in talking to clients is when they try and transfer these books to a regular MP3 player, one of two things will happen. The first thing that will happen is the MP3 player will say, I don't know what these smile files are. I do not want to play this book. Um, or they will say, I don't know what these smile files are. I don't care. I'm going to play the MP3s. And 90% of the time, that's what happens. Uh, I was speaking to um, some clients the other day, uh, a couple in their 70s actually, and they were trying to download um, some books, and they were trying to download it to their Sony Walkman. And after I, I, I was thinking, Sony Walkman, that's that yellow thing you put a taste into. That's what I'm familiar with. But there is an MP3 uh, version that they were using. And we just did this. We downloaded the book. We unzipped it. And I asked them to just move this folder, this unzipped version over onto the device, and it worked. It ignored all the other files, the smile files. So those are some things you can do. And of course, if you do that, you're not going to have all the DAISY functionality. But um, just wanted to let you know that there's a little bit more um, to the DAISY books. They're actually just made up of MP3s. So you can grab those out of there if you, if you want. So a couple things to remember uh, here. The iPad and Read2Go is pretty easy. Um, in no way am I suggesting that your clients need an iPad or that they have to have an iPad. I don't have an iPad. I would like one. <laughs> um, but uh, they don't need to have one. So it, it's just a really easy way to go if they do. And as you'll see in a minute uh, when we take a look at Bookshare, 
there's a whole host of other books that they can get. A really uh, great opportunity if they do have an iPad and they do uh, get that Read to Go app. The other thing to mention again, lots of options in one size or download method does not fit all. There's lots of different ways that you can download a book, and um, it depends on the different kind of technology you have. But in theory, they all should work pretty much the same. Key thing to remember uh, if you're downloading our Daisy Zip books is to, for in the most cases, you, you're going to want to unzip those books. If you are getting a lot of requests for a particular uh, download method, um, you can get in touch with, with these people here. This is a SELA member services, their toll-free number and their email address. Uh, my name is not here, but I sit beside all of these people. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to do uh, webinars like this. And, and one of the things we want to try and do a little bit more is to create some more videos. Um, we have some uh, text-based instructions, step-by-step -step instructions for different setups. Those are in the process of being translated right now, and, and we hope to have those up on the, uh, the SELA site on the, the help section very soon. But if you are running into um, people using JAWS 12 and Internet Explorer 11 and, and, and you need help, um, get in touch with SELA member services, and they will get in touch with me, and hopefully, um, hopefully we can sort that out. So at this point, um, what, I wanted, I, what I wanted to mention as well, um, there, the read to go app, there is a cost associated with it. Um, there are some other apps out there. Um, what I tell clients um, when they're downloading, uh, they're trying out different apps is basically what you would tell anyone is you, you get what you pay for. Um, my experience with the read to go app is it's the best that I've been using, so that's what I recommend. The cost is $19, $19. Uh, but it's great. And as you'll see in a minute, um, all of the, the kinds of things that you can get through Bookshare are pretty amazing too. So what I want to do at this point is just uh, close this up, and then I'm going to hand it over to Christina to talk about um, Bookshare. This is Christina Pappas. I'm the International Program Manager for Bookshare in California. And I'm really excited to be here in Toronto visiting our friends at SELA and really excited to be able to participate in this webinar today. Um, quick background, Bookshare is operated by a nonprofit organization in California called Benetech. And uh, so if you see Benetech on the slides, that's why Bookshare is one of the initiatives that Benetech does in the areas of literacy and human rights and the environment. So today I wanted to cover just a brief description of what is Bookshare because I'm not sure if everyone on this call is familiar with Bookshare. And then we're going to spend a lot of time talking about how you download Bookshare books on various devices, uh, starting with two easiest ways, or three if you count both kinds of tablets and, and mobile devices as separate devices. And we'll go into a little more detail on the complicated ways if somebody has uh, another kind of assistive technology that they are comfortable with. And then after you're excited and agree with me that Bookshare is awesome and very easy to use, I'll cover a little bit about who is qualified to join Bookshare and what you could do to help them sign up. So this is Bookshare's home page. Uh, just a quick summary, Bookshare is a library of accessible online books. And uh, it covers, it's available for people with print disabilities, the same as SELA, uh, visual impairment, physical disability that prevents holding or using a physical book, and a learning disability that severely affects the ability to read. Uh, with our partnership with SELA, Bookshare access is free to patrons who receive SELA services. Normally it's $50 US per year uh, for a subscription to download up to 200 books per month. Schools and other organizations can also join with the group membership. So right now we have about 320,000 members and the majority of those are students in the US because we receive funding from the Department of Education to provide accessible materials to every student in the U.S. who needs it.
So first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about why we think Bookshare is so awesome. And partly it's because we have a huge collection and it's growing every day. Um, we have over 200,000 titles available in Canada to members in Canada right now. And we're adding about two or 3,000 books per month. One of the reasons that we do this is that we get electronic files directly from our publisher partners. We work with over 500 publishers in, so far, including many of the biggest publishers like Simon & Schuster and Random House, Penguin, Hachette, HarperCollins, and so on. So we get their text files, and one big difference between Bookshare and Sela that's important to note is that all of our books rely on text-to-speech synthetic audio, so it's not quite the same narration as Sula's human narrated books. That means they're smaller and we're able to produce them in a really timely way. So when Random House sends their new bestseller to Amazon to go on sale, it automatically comes to Bookshare at the same time. So we're able to get those books almost simultaneously with the, with the other major online distributors. But then we turn them into accessible books and they're available in accessible format the same day as at Amazon. And another difference if you're used to partnerships with OverDrive, for example, is that Bookshare books don't expire. So members who qualify for Bookshare can download their own books. They're watermarked with the name and they never expire, so the member doesn't have to turn them back into the library. I also just wanted to point out that some of the um, book covers I have here on the slide, I just went through the Globe and Mail bestseller list a couple of days ago and made sure that they were in our library and we have most of them. So it's pretty exciting to be able to say that we already have these bestsellers in the library. Another reason that Bookshare is awesome is that there are lots of ways to read our books. And so when I said there are over 200,000 titles available to members in Canada, that's actually individual titles. And each of those titles is available in every format that we offer. So they're all available in Braille, Braille ready format, for example, for use on an electronic Braille reader. They are all available as JV text. Are all available as MP3 files, so um, that's not just items, but it's actual individual titles. So you can listen to the books on an MP3 player, you could uh, read in text or electronic braille, or you could do both at the same time, which is often really helpful for people with learning disabilities to be able to hear the text and see it spoken, uh, sorry, see it highlighted so they can connect what they're hearing and what they're seeing and it helps them better understand and retain what they're learning. Another reason that Bookshare is awesome, and I think Sela is awesome in this way too, is that all of these books work on a variety of devices. So it could be an iPod, or a smartphone, or a tablet, or a desktop, or a specific technology like a Braille reader or a Victor Stream, for example. Whatever the reader is most comfortable with, we can deliver books in that format for that device. So now I wanted to talk specifically about how to download books. And the easiest way by far is to read in your browser on your computer. You're basically just streaming the book, just as if you would stream a piece of music on your computer. And we'll go through some individual steps, but there's really only three steps. Log into your Bookshare account. Search for a book and click Read Now and it will open in your screen. And I should also um, explain that it works a little differently on different browsers. So it's optimized to work best with Google Chrome, which has the ability to read within the browser as well as highlight. People can also use other types of browsers, uh, but they need their own screen reader if they want to hear the book at the same time. And we're working to include more browsers and more, more capabilities, but at the moment, the browsers on mobile devices like Safari for the iPad, they're not currently supported. But we'll get to mobile devices in a minute. There's easier ways to use them on mobile devices. So with WebReader, once you've searched for a book and you have a list of results, 
When you go to download the book, you'll actually see a link next to the, the downloading choices that says Read Now. And all you have to do is click that book, click that link, sorry. And you'll see this message that says your book is downloading. And depending on the size of the book, it's the same as downloading the file, it may take quicker time or longer time to download the book. But you'll see that your computer is working. Once you open it, I won't show again the screen that I showed first of the, the highlighted text being read, but you can also adjust the settings. So for example, choosing the contrast, um, you can choose the size of the margins and things like that. There's other navigational features along the top. Um, so you can do full screen to minimize the distractions. You can navigate within the book to move forward or back. You can start and stop the audio and so on. So if clients have a mobile device, there are a couple of really easy options that we can talk about. Um, <clears throat> and the steps are just as easy for a mobile device. The, the only extra step is that somebody should first download the app. So with read to go for the iOS, which is iPhone and iPad, um, it costs $20 per device US. And then GoRead, which was developed on open source uh, reading software, is actually free to users. That's for Android devices. And with both of those, after you download the app, you simply log into your Bookshare account, search for a title, and click Read, and it will download and display the book. So with read to go for example, um, I've actually gone through a step-by-step -step series of screenshots to show you every step that you'll see in the process. This is the search page. So I've gone up into the, um, the search bar where I could choose to search by author, title, ISBN, and so on. Um, I've typed Pride and Prejudice. And then I get a list of Pride and Prejudice results. So a lot of people have written about them and written various versions of their books with notes on the front. I choose one to download and I see a little more information about that particular one. And when I click the download button, I will see that it's in the process of downloading. So I know that it's busy, it's doing something. And when it's done downloading, it will ask me if I'm ready to read it right now. If I click no, I just go to whatever else I was doing and the book stays on my bookshelf so I can return to it later. But if I'm ready to read it now, I click yes, and then open up the book in my browser, and uh, sorry, in the app. And you'll see, just like with WebReader, that the text is highlighted in the paragraph that I'm reading, but also the actual word that I'm reading, so that I could really stay focused. These are settings, so you can change not only the size of the text, you could adjust the background colors, and that that colors of the highlighting and text. So especially for readers with learning disabilities, different highlight colors can be really important to help them see effectively and really understand what they're reading. You can also select the voice. So you can turn it on or off, and you can choose from a male or female voice. You could change the reading speed, which doesn't affect the pitch, so you can listen to it really slowly or really quickly, and it won't sound like you're listening to a chipmunk record. If, if your client has an Android device, there's another app called GoRead, and it, it works very similarly. So here's a screenshot of um, my various choices. I could look at my bookshelf, I could search for things, and so on. And I choose search. These are all the different ways that I can search. And I've searched for Moby Dick here, so this is showing me all the results. And this is not Moby Dick, but another book that I've opened with, read, with the Go Read. And uh, you'll see the information and again, the opportunity to download the book. And once I've downloaded it, I can start reading it. And it has navigation buttons at the bottom to move forward and to stop and, and start again. 
So those are the absolute easiest ways for people who are, have gotten comfortable using tablets maybe and can do a lot of basic things on the computer. For people who are interested in using, using assistive technology that they're already comfortable with or have a device that they're already using or are more comfortable with computers, you can use Bookshare books with a lot of other devices and it's very similar to to what Phil talked about, about downloading and then opening it with your device. So just as you would uh, you'd search and find a book that you want, you'd choose that download format, whether it's AZ text or MP3 or Braille, um, and then you download the book. And as Phil said, there are a lot of different ways that, that books get downloaded. So for example, depending on your browser and the browser version and the operating system, it may ask you where to download the file or just download them to a folder. And you can always go into the browser settings, I think almost always go into the browsing settings, and decide where you want to download the book if you're having problems finding it. Once you've downloaded the book, then go to find it and extract it, and then open the book with your preferred assistive reading technology. So again, here are a little more specific examples of screenshots. I've, I've searched for a list of books and I found some books that I'm interested in reading. And uh, underneath each title I have a, an area to download the book and choose what format I want to download it in. So if I click that, then I get this, this um, wizard that's walking me through where I'm downloading it. For larger files, the, um, the books are often, it takes them a while to download, so for MP3s, for example, and you'll receive an email message when it is ready for you to go back to your Bookshare account and get. And then you can save that, um, save that as a file to a folder or to your flash drive. And here's another version, basically, of extracting a zipped file. So as Phil explained, you need to actually extract the zipped file before you can use the different formats that are inside. So I've highlighted a couple of the uh, screenshots where you can make this happen. And this is what the zipped, the unzipped, well, the zipped file versus the unzipped or extracted file looks like and how it's different. So that is a quick overview of the computer, uh, just this slide is to show you that there are so many different kinds of software and technology that's compatible with Bookshare and with Stila books. The three that I've highlighted in bold at the top next to the um, yellow icon is uh, those three are free or have versions that are free for Bookshare members. So again, if uh, somebody is interested in trying out other options, they're, they're welcome to do that. The read to go and the two apps for different mobile platforms are by far the easiest ways to read the book. Um, I also wanted to include this information about our demo account for Canada because I think a lot of people have looked at Bookshare but because they can't get in it's really hard to understand how easy it is to use and what's available. So with this account, when you log in, you'll see a list of books that are only available to members in Canada. So members that use this wouldn't get frustrated looking for a book and thinking they would have access to it only to find out later on that it's not available in Canada. It's not a downloadable account because it's not a real account, but you can download books that are public domain or freely available. So there's some instructions on how to find those kinds of books and the process is exactly the same whether books are copyrighted or public domain. So you could try this at your own after this, uh, this conference and, and see how it works. So after uh, talking about why Bookshare is awesome and how easy it is to download books, I just wanted to spend a little time talking about who can qualify to join Bookshare. It's a little bit different from SELA, although the kinds of disabilities that we serve are the same because Bookshare started under American copyright law and because now our books that are available internationally come with the permission of publishers who have admired the work that we do and our ability to 
abide by the copyright law, our agreements with publishers still require us to get the kind of proof of disability that we need to get from any user in the U.S. So the qualifications are a visual impairment or a physical disability that affects the use or ability to use a book, and a learning disability that severely affects reading. So a learning disability that does not affect reading or another disability like autism does not qualify by itself unless it also happens to be accompanied by another learning disability or other disability that affects the ability to read. And so I, I hope that's clear because I, I know that's a point of confusion for a lot of people that are are thinking that Bookshare isn't really available for many people. Part of the problem is that we, we require um, a proof of, of disability to join Bookshare. And so under each of these types of disabilities, I listed the kind of people who can verify that a user has a disability that would make them eligible for Bookshare. We at Bookshare don't want to be in the, in the business of determining who is uh, who's qualified or not, so we rely on people with professional experience to let us know, in their professional opinion, who needs access to Bookshare. And so for someone who's qualified and thinks that Bookshare would be a really great resource, um, here's some information on how they could sign up. So there's some uh, registration info, or there will be, I think, with the SELA registration info. Um, but in order to take advantage of their free membership, a patron who's registered for SELA services should then sign up for Bookshare on our website. At the end of the registration process, they get a, or they can download a customized proof of disability form. It has their name and contact information in it. And they could take this form to one of the, one of the professionals that was listed on the previous slide and get that signed, and then send the signed form to us at Bookshare. And we'll confirm with SELA that they're eligible for the free membership. And, um, and that's how someone can join Bookshare and, and be part of the SELA free Bookshare membership. So that's an overview of Bookshare and downloading. Um, there's some interesting some URLs here for you to get more information if you're interested, and also my email address if people have questions. Okay. So, Thank you very much, Christina. That was great.